Russian President Putin outraging many Americans with his New York Times op-ed, and now Senator John McCain getting even in a Russian online publication. We spoke with Senator McCain a short time ago. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Thank you, Greta. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in your new time slot. Maybe I'll get more rest now. Indeed, we all will. We are all thrilled, I can tell you that much. Uh, the staff loves me as a consequence now. For um, a change. For a change, exactly. I'll tell you who probably doesn't love you. You practically took the skin off um, President Putin in your uh, op-ed uh, in the Pravda um, uh, online. Um, you called him everything. You said you called him basically corrupt, elections are rigged, control of media. Uh, did you leave anything out? Not that I could, uh, if, it, if I didn't leave anything out, it's because I didn't think of it. But uh, it, look, uh, by the way, there's two Pravdas. One is online and the other is still the old line. The, the old line communist one said they wouldn't print mine because I didn't adopt their position on Syria. But I was pleased that that Pravda published it <coughs> online. And I was glad that uh, Vladimir Putin today uh, not only said that um, I was wrong, but he invited me to a discussion club in Moscow. I'll have to I'll have to look at it and maybe I'll take him up on the invite. Yeah, that's just beyond me how that can happen. I mean, I mean you, you, say, you described it here, first of all, by the editor, described you as an act, active anti-Russian politician for many years, I might add, is what he describes it. But I mean, you just you basically just rip the skin off Putin yeah, but, and off, and off you know, of him. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve but, it, but... But, uh, but Greta, what is going on in Russia is outrageous, ranging from the jailing of some young women who did something pretty rude uh, to um, the Magnitsky issue where situation where this man who was a reformer was basically killed in prison. Khodorkovsky is kept in prison, a repression. There is not a media outlet today in Russia that's not owned by the government. The repression uh, and even killing of some dissidents uh, is rampant. They are total violators of human rights and we need we need to realize who we are dealing with here, an old KGB colonel. And that's what he is that wants to stay in power for life. And the irony of it is that he's now sort of the peacenik uh, in terms of he's now the one he's who stops the, the U.S. from uh, targeted strikes in Syria. Now, thanks to this incredible bungling, he's now the arbiter of peace in the Middle East. He has now inserted Russia, by the way, the 16th lar world's largest economy, 16th, but he has now made Russia relevant and, and impactful in the Middle East in a way they haven't been since 1973. And now he is supposedly going to go to Tehran and broker a peace deal there. I can hardly wait to see what that one looks like. Secretary Kerry spoke today and your thoughts about what he had to say. Well, Secretary Kerry um, said that he wanted things done and there's no fooling around, there's no uh, delays, etc. But yet already we are hearing two things. One, that the Russians are moving, excuse me, Bashar Assad is moving around his chemical weapons and he's moving them in a lot of ways. And also they're not going to make the first deadline. The first deadline was this second. Saturday. And at the time, Kerry said they must uh, submit within a week, not 30 days, but in one week, a comprehensive listing, no games, no room for avoidance or anything less than full compliance. Today, the State Department spokeswoman says, quote, our goal is to see forward momentum by Saturday, not the full list. Quote, we've never said it was a hard and fast deadline. Now, which is it? Now, and again on this credibility issue, if I could just mention this, today, today, Vladimir Putin said, quote, we have every reason to believe that it was, meaning the gas attack that killed 1,400 people, we have every reason to believe that it was a provocation, a sly and ingenious one. In other words, we're dealing with people who still won't acknowledge that Bashar Assad, it was despite overwhelming evidence, the, uh, that uh, Bashar Assad was responsible for this chemical attack. Now, how much should we trust 
uh, the, the Russians when they still say that. And by the way, they have also made it clear that if Bashar Assad fails to comply and we go to the United Nations, they will still veto a resolution. Have we been had, or is it even though it doesn't look particularly good, it's worth a try to sort of work within this framework? Where we are now, obviously we should try it where we are now. But for the first time in history, a president of the United States said he was going to take military, military action and then said, but he was going to go to Congress. Now, if he just said, I want to take military action and I'm going to get the endorsement of Congress, that's one thing. But to say you're going to act and then not, uh, it's the old Napoleon line. If you say you're going to take Vienna, take Vienna. And obviously, we then em ended up into a casual remark by the Secretary of State about how Bashar Assad must give up his chemical weapons, grabbed a hold of by that wily old fox, Sergei Lavrov, and now we find ourselves, we are where we are. And you know, one of the aspects of this we know already, there's been no punishment. No punishment. In other words, uh, Bashar Assad crossed the red line, gassed a 1,400 people, 400 of them children, and there has been no retaliation. Now, maybe some will say uh, getting a hold of his chemical weapons stock is, uh, is, is retaliation. I, I'm not sure. They're taking the appropriate lesson in Tehran and in Israel and in Pyongyang and all over the world. Um, one of the leading um, Middle East uh, rulers, one of the most influential ones, just made a plans for a visit to Moscow. Uh, and of course now we hear that Vladimir Putin is going to Tehran to be the peacemaker there. This has really turned into a, an Orwellian experience. Senator, thank you, sir. Thank you.